So the skin of color population is a growing population in the United States. So the U.S. Census Bureau predicts that by 2050, at least half of the United States will fall into a skin of color population. So this is a rapidly growing population. There's a lot of conditions that disproportionately affect this group, and so it's really important that we recognize those conditions and have effective treatments for them. I would say one of the most common things I see are pigmentary-related conditions. So because people um, who have skin of color have more melanin, which is our word for pigment, they often have you know increase or decrease in pigment in a response to a lot of skin conditions they have so even patients who have everyday conditions like acne or eczema or psoriasis a lot of times when these conditions go away they're left with dark spots and so this is very frustrating for a lot of patients and they want treatments not only for their dermatologic condition but also for the resultant increased pigment that they have So ingrown hair is a condition that actually can happen in anybody, but we can see it happening more commonly in darker skinned individuals who may have curlier hair. So in the beard area, this condition actually has a name called pseudofolliculitis barbae. And so what happens is oftentimes from shaving, especially shaving too closely, they end up with all these sort of razor bumps or ingrown hairs. And it can be a very frustrating condition. Um, it happens in men and women who have unwanted facial hair. And so we go through not only treatments for dealing with the bumps and the dark spots, but also how to try to prevent it um, through different types of hair removal. So melasma is a condition uh, that occurs more commonly in women. It's a pigmentary condition where they get dark spots. Uh, it can happen on the forehead, the cheeks, uh, upper lip, uh, chin, and so usually um, it happens related to hormonal reasons and sun exposure. So we see it a lot in pregnant women or people who have even been on birth control for a long time, and it's very frustrating. People really don't like it because it takes a long time to treat, and there's no cure per se. So we pretty much, once it starts, we use different, you know, either products or treatments to try to get it to go away, but patients have to be very good about sun protection because one day in the sun without adequate protection and it can all come back. So they have done a lot of studies looking at melasma and laser treatment and some of them have shown some efficacy but oftentimes the melasma ends up coming back and the concern is that in some of the studies the melasma came back worse than when it was originally there and so you know the it's a little bit um, hard to say for sure really whether it's for everybody because there is this possibility that the melasma can come back and it can be worse. So Post-inflammatory uh, pigmentary change is pretty much our terminology for increase in pigment, uh, which we call hyperpigmentation, or a decrease in pigment, which we call hypopigmentation. So similar to what we were discussing earlier, anybody who has any sort of rash or trauma to the skin and is a person of color who has more pigment can end up with that increase or decrease in pigmentation. And so that's a condition that's very common that, uh, that bothers a lot of people. Heloids are uh, basically scars. Uh, they're scars that sort of go beyond the original area of trauma and they're very frustrating. They're very common, especially in darker skin population. Treatment wise, our, one of our mainstays are usually injection of steroids. Um, you know, there are newer treatments where people are trying to freeze them from the inside using liquid nitrogen. Radiation therapy is another option. Um, surgical treatment are also an option, but there's always the risk of the keloid coming back and it being even, you know, bigger than before. So those are some of the things that we try and, and sometimes it's successful, other times it's not. AKN is our abbreviation for a condition called acne keloidalis nuki, and that's a condition that tends to happen on the back of the scalp. We see it more commonly in men, um, can also happen in women, but um, similar to the condition we discussed earlier about ingrown hairs, it's related to inflammation in the hair follicles. And so often when men who have curly hair, you know, cut their hair too close to the scalp, they can get that sort of inflammatory response in the hair follicles. They get tiny skin colored bumps. Uh, it can get infected, so you can even see pustules in the area. And then when it continues chronically, they start forming a scar there um, that can look very much like a keloid. You know, the first thing is obviously treating the underlying condition. So we try to aggressively treat whatever they have so as to prevent the dark spots from even happening in the first place. You know, once they're already there, there's a lot of treatment options, including topical creams, procedural things like chemical peels, lasers um, that we use. And we sort of decide based on the patient's skin color and, um, 
you know, their financial budget, sort of what will work best. It's a combination. I mean, topical creams uh, definitely are one of our mainstay treatments for a lot of these conditions, but there's also a lot of procedural things that can be done. Uh, as I mentioned before, chemical peels as well as lasers are some other modalities that we also use as part of our treatment. I think one thing um, that's improving over time is the ability to use lasers in skin of color, and I have an interest in procedural dermatology as well, so I think that's an exciting um, area of progress in dermatology because in the past we really um, had limited use of, of certain lasers and skin of color because of the risk of the hyper and hypopigmentation that I discussed earlier. Mm -hmm. And so although that risk is still always there, there are um, safer lasers coming out uh, and technologies that we can now use in all skin types. And so I think that's a really great advancement um, in our field.